Good morning. Welcome to St. Christopher's. It is a pleasure, as always, to be here this morning. Thankfully, uh, we're not outside. <laughs> and uh, stay safe and cool out there today. I understand it's supposed to be pretty rough by the time the afternoon rolls around. Our opening hymn today is number 657, and we will ring the prayer bell and begin worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Shout aloud, O daughter, Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he. Humble and riding on a donkey. On a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. For you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read in unison Psalm 45. Hear, O God. Consider this closely, for the nature of people in your father's house. The king will have pleasure in your beauty. He is your master, therefore do him honor. The people of Tyre are here with the gift. The rich among the people seek your favor. All glorious is the princess that she enters. Her gown is soft and robe. In embroidered apparel, she is brought to the king. After her, the bridesmaids follow in procession. With joy and gladness, they are brought and enter into the house of the king. In place of fathers, O king, you shall have sons. You shall make them princes over all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want. But I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. <laughs> but in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me that is in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, Evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self. 
but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Curious 
destructive, extraordinary, fascinating creatures. We really are. We are full of great intentions and contradictory motivations. We should do this, but we end up doing that. And we aren't always sure why. In a paper published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, two professors, one from uh, Swarthmore and the other from Yale, argue that there are two kinds of motives that drive human behavior internal and instrumental. Now, if a scientist conducts research because she wants to discover important, pack, important facts about the world, that's an internally motivated purpose. If another scientist conducts research because they want to achieve scholarly renown, that's an instrumentally motivated purpose. So, these two professors studied cadets from nine entering classes of West Point to see if there was a correlation between internal and instrumental motives and success. What they found was, predictably, internally motivated cadets were more likely to succeed than instrumentally motivated cadets. If you're motivated to do what's right, that, that is a stronger motivation than being motivated to be successful. Now, not really a surprise, but the predictable measure of success, internal motivation and purpose. What was surprising though, was that internally motivated and instrumentally motivated people did the worst of all in part because uh, their moral and ethical internal motivation that pushes them to act in a certain way gets, comes up against an instrumental motivation that might have a different goal. But since all our actions are a little bit of both, it's always going to be a struggle to do the right thing. Which, in a roundabout way, leads us to Paul's epistle to the Romans. You knew I'd get there. In today's reading, Paul offers us two different ways of being in the world. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want to do, and I end up doing the very thing I hate. Internal motivation and instrumental reality grinding against each other. We want to follow the law, to be yoked to the law, as a, uh, a rabbi would say, but it is nearly impossible because of our sinfulness. Or do we need to be yoked to the law and to something else? The something else Paul is talking about is Christ Jesus. Through the sacrament of baptism, where we participate in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we are yoked to Jesus. By doing so, we have life in Christ Jesus. <coughs> Paul goes on to say that it's not that there's anything wrong with the law in and of itself. It's that we're unable to follow it as humans because we live in a constant tension between our actions and our inner, self, our inner self. As creatures, we are created to live by God's commandments, explains Paul. Yet, and it's a big yet, we don't, or we won't, or we can't. There are many things I can will myself to do and still fail to do them. I bet we could come up with several things right now on our list of I will, but I don't. I do the things I do not wish to do, no matter how hard I try not to do them. You and I can will ourselves to obey God, but in the end, we're just, we just aren't very good at overcoming the forces of this world that lead us astray and separate us. It goes without saying 
that we no longer live in an agrarian society. And even those of us who might work the land don't do it with oxen. So a yoked image can be a confusing one. A yoke has two ox bows, yoking the oxen together, just behind the head of each one. So to be yoked to the law, or to be yoked to Jesus, is to share that yoke with them, to be attached in a way that cannot be broken. Taking upon oneself the yoke of the law, as the rabbis would say, is implicitly but deliberately contrasted in Paul's letter to Jesus' yoke of humility and meekness. Illness, death, family, societal concerns, they can all, they can all overwhelm us, and they do. We know that. We feel lost. There's no way forward, no way backwards. And we feel alone. But if we are yoked, we are not. We are not alone. Matthew's words are so powerful. Jesus's yoke of humility and forgiveness is for all of us. And to be yoked to Jesus is to always look to the left and see our Lord and Savior in the oxbow next to us. His internal motivations become ours. His desires become ours. His love becomes our, ours. And we realize we are not alone. In the last few weeks, Beth and I had the privilege of traveling around Spain and seeing some amazing things. A Saints Day parade in the Triana district of Sevilla transports us back to the 15th century. Cordova, anchored by the Cathedral Mosque, raised so, so many theological questions. Granada and the Alhambra, best known to Game of Thrones fans as the Red Keep. Girona, Barcelona, all such different experiences and amazing and unique. In a little town between Alicante and Valencia, on the Costa Blanca, we were there for the feast day of San Juan. Families gathered on the beach at sunset, lit bonfires, and at midnight made a wish and would run into the ocean. And if you could jump the first three waves, your wish comes true. Religiously, it's a moment to set aside sins of the past and to start anew. But the most amazing thing that we experienced was, was when we visited Gaudí's famous Sagrada Familia. The Sagrada Familia is the Basilica in Barcelona. And Tony Gaudí was a Catalan architect and designer. His style was highly individualistic and organic, known today as Catalan Modernista. Think about, think Art Nouveau in this country. When I first encountered his work in graduate school, it seemed whimsical to me and a bit egocentric, I have to admit. And before our visit, I would have said that Gaudi was instrumentally motivated, not internally motivated by the work he did. I would have been wrong. The Basilica of Sagrada Familia is the most coherent, beautiful representation of the story of our faith in the medium of architecture I've ever seen. Nothing, has come, nothing comes close. If one is paying attention, Gaudi's Basilica yokes us to the story of creation and Christ's birth, death, and resurrection. You enter Today, it's not going to be the official entrance, but you enter today on the northeast side through the birth portico, washed in blue light from the rose window, which represents sunrise and birth and Mary. 
and you slowly move into the central space and the light changes to a subtle green. And your eyes naturally move up and you realize the columns are trees. And the ceiling is this amazing canopy and you are in a forest in the Garden of Eden. It's absolutely extraordinary. And as you move towards the southwest transept, the light changes imperceptibly at first to orange and the color of sunset and the end of things. And you experience the death and resurrection of Jesus through that portico. The Lord's Prayer is what binds it all together. It appears inside the Basilica in 50 different languages, primarily, primarily Catalan. And it's that prayer that yokes us to Christ. And for a brief moment, the incongruity of life, the contradictions of our actions and our intent, as Paul talks about, well, they just drop away. I am yoked to Christ, and the way forward is clear. We are simply not strong enough 100% of the time to do the right thing. We know this. Gaudi knew it. Paul's community knew it too. To be yoked is to let go and follow Jesus. St. John Chrysostom, the 5th century saint who was known, as, known in his day as a brilliant preacher, Chrysostomos means golden mouth. In his homily, in one of his homilies about this passage from Matthew, he said this, quote, not this or that person, but all that are in anxiety, in sorrows, in sins. Come, not that I might call you to account, but that I may do away with your sins. Come not because I want your honor, but because I want your salvation. And I, he says, will give you rest. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in spirit, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Um. Ensure and certain hope of the resurrection, let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who sees from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
We acknowledge the one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We know of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily work, for, for our friends, friends, friends and neighbors, and, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Andy, Kay, Jeff, and Hector, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For, for all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially Atelia, Joel, Harry, Mike, Sally, Elizabeth, Bill, Aaron, Jean, Mark, Marcia, Mary, Amelia, Richard, Ryan, Todd, Ryan, MJ, Cynthia, Ron, Nancy, John, Kale, and Daniel. Whom else are we praying for? For princes. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And, and praise, praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Jane and Todd. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. Let us confess our sins against our God and our neighbor. Most merciful God. We, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray a prayer for St. Christopher's. Vicki, will you start it, please? Thank you. 
Almighty and ever living, living God, God, ruler of all things in heaven, heaven and earth, hear, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind with your beautiful Church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Morning again. Just a couple of announcements today. Um, always please uh, uh, think about El Buen when you're looking in your cabinet or when you're shopping and get some extra things for them that might be helpful uh, and bring them up here so we can take them over there. Your vestry in June. Uh, from the outreach budget uh, on behalf of this community made a substantial financial donation to Elwyn and on behalf of everybody and we're grateful for that to help with food insecurity during the summer. Our uh, men's breakfast is next Sunday at 8 at Jim's so please uh, we always have a good time so uh, and the food's good, so please come, please sign up and come. And if you forget to sign up, come anyway. We'll find a chair for you. And where is it again? At Jim's Restaurant at the Y in Oak Hill. Um, an announcement that's not in here, but that I did put in the, I did put in the connection this week. Our, uh, our pastoral ministry here, our PAM group, helps people with rides and, and food and flowers and takes care of those of us inside this community that are in need. And one of the things that we did this week was establish just a separate line item in the budget so that for people to participate in that ministry, it doesn't mean that the money for those things has to come out of their own pocket, but that is supported by the whole congregation. So. The opportunity is there now if you would like to designate a gift to the PAM ministry and that money will go in that bucket and it will be there to help with all the important ministry that that group does. So uh, if you'd like, please take advantage of that. There's some information in the connection, uh, more information than that about that in the connection. Can I, can I I just want to add a special thanks to Gene Kelly for leading that group and for all of you who have participated in that because you have been a lifeline for us since last April, a year ago. 
thank you so much. You've done a lot of work. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Larry. Yes. If you weren't here, it was a great celebration, and a lot of uh, a lot of really unhealthy food was consumed. <laughs> yes, dear. Oh yeah, today. Yeah. As always, join us in the parish hall afterwards. There's quite a spread over there today, so please take advantage of that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. service continues on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts.
We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the words made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Christopher and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Behold the way.
the gifts of God for the people of God. This is the body and blood of Jesus. Behold who you are and become what you receive.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are the new members of the body of your Son and the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, now our Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to, to love and serve you, faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lift High the Cross, number 473.